Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming, really totally delighted to see you all. Um, I think most of you know me actually, but I'm Lucy Terry Michael's daughter and sponsoring Dennis. Um, it's lovely to see so many familiar face faces and colleagues from work for me in Somerset. First time I've tempted anyone down to Dorset, so that's really exciting. And um, yeah, and some good friends of all of ours, so a big welcome and thank you for coming. I wanted to just say a couple of words. First of all, a little bit about Ukraine. Have you yet, Dennis? <laughs> <laughs> I've changed really my speech from yesterday. It's a lot worse than it was. <laughs> I feel like Remembrance Sunday tomorrow and Answers Day yesterday is the perfect weekend for us to, to all come together and think about supporting the peace effort um, and doing our bit to try and contribute to bringing the war in Ukraine to an end. Um, and I think there's been some good news on that front last night with some reclaiming of territory, so that's all yeah. fantastic. But yeah. the atrocities are just unimaginable. And to uh, attack an energy supply feels like it's something which we can't stand by and do nothing about. So, um, you know, we're hoping tonight to do our bit. We can't, we can't solve the problem ourselves as much as we'd like to, but we can all do our bit and contribute something towards it. So some people have donated as well as buying the tickets and thank you very much for that. And there is on my Facebook feed, I hate saying this, but there is a just giving if you want to add a little bit more to the donations. <laughs> the money's going to be basically going towards a Ukrainian charity that Dennis has chosen and also a bit of it will go to Dennis's musical education and future. Um, and there's some money going to... Um, a family who are close to Elena and Maxim, who live with mum and dad, whose husband was killed in the war, to support a widow and child in Ukraine. So, a little bit about Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> so worried, <wasn't> <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I want to, first of all, just set the scene for you, which is, I think it was April that we first connected, Dennis and, and, and I, and... He was looking to come to the UK, leaving his family in Ukraine, aged 18, on his own, just turned 18, I think, actually, mm -hmm. only a few weeks before. Mm -hmm. And I just think the courage and the, the, the bravery of, of doing that and travelling alone to a completely new country um, is unimaginable. I can't, I can't think of how I would have coped with that at that age. So, you know, all credit to you for taking that journey. And not with a great deal of English. <laughs> so, the, when I, we picked Dennis up off the bus and he was like, oh my God. <laughs> that was literally pretty well what you could say. A few other swear words and cringe, which was a new word that it would, would reintroduce into my life. For about two weeks, that was it, wasn't it? And you'll soon hear that in sort of four and a half months he's done incredibly with his English but. It's a big journey and it's a lot to take on. And he's coped with a, a, a new country, a new culture, a new climate. I think that's a bit of a shock to the system. New food. <laughs> oh, your vegetables don't taste. <laughs> oh God, I'm really sorry, but how does the carrot taste so different? <laughs> yeah, apparently it does. <laughs> and we, I think it was a couple of weeks yeah. was it before we really heard you play the piano. And, and, and actually, Dennis, you t I think you've mentioned the piano, but we had this like really awkward translated conversation when we were kind of working out whether he was going to come to us with someone saying something, Dennis saying something, Dennis's mum saying, you know, so we didn't really communicate very effectively. And then when he arrived, there was a sort of mention of piano, and we had this sort of keyboard that we <laughs> dragged out of mum's house and thought that'll do. <laughs> you can play on that. And then I think mum probably, you listened first, I think, and you're like, oh, Lucy, you might, <laughs> you might need to do something about this. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, because we're quite a sciencey family, really, and you're very musical, mum's very musical, but really all of us just listen to the Coldplay and sort of prance around in the kitchen. <laughs> and, um, and so we've had a lot of help, and Richard is here today was the first person that kind of listened to Dennis and I said, so what, what do you think, you know, what do you think Richard? And he went, he's a pianist. And I was like, oh, what's, what's that mean? He's like, can you teach him? And he went, 
No. <laughs> and I thought, oh, because Richard taught everyone in this area to play the piano, so we were banking on him. So we've had a lot of help and support from the local musical community, haven't we? And we've been having lessons with the local concert pianist, who's been amazing. So thank you very much. And I think just to tell you, the first time that I properly heard Dennis play the piano was in here. And um, I sort of came in and he was sitting around the piano doing something, and Casper was sitting on the sofa over there, and I sat down and thought, I'll, I'll listen. And Dennis started playing, and I literally was overwhelmed with tears, probably for about an hour. <laughs> A lot of that was the music, but there was also that realisation that there was somebody whose talent you needed to do something to support. And really, Dennis's talent and his musicality has just shone through. Um, and hopefully you'll hear a bit of that tonight. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you to the people who are cooking, which is amazing. It's been an incredible endeavour to create <coughs> the food. But also thank you to my parents, who are sitting very nicely on the throne tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Michael and Terry, you've been unbelievable. And when I suggested that maybe we do a concert in that way that you do, let's do a concert. <laughs> and then kind of left it to you to sort it all out. <laughs> well, I went off and went to work. So, and you've been unbelievable and so <coughs> supportive and you just worked so hard for this. So thank you so much for everything. <laughs> Now, over to Dennis. Oh no, do you want to say no? I'll do it at the end. Hi, I'm Dennis, you know, I'm a Ukrainian kind of refugee, I'm 18 years old. Of course, that I wanted to say it, um, thank you so much for coming. That's the only one that I can do for Ukraine right now uh, with my music. Um, you know, that money from the ticket will go to Ukraine for supporting Ukraine, my army. Uh, I'm really grateful for you all, and I'm grateful for my army, uh, for Ukraine, that I can do it for them. Uh, they saved my country, my home, my, my whole life. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, my British family, my British parents, Lucia and Henry, Arthur, Casper, Ali, uh, British grandparents, uh, Terry and Michael. <laughs> uh, yeah, all of my, my friends. That here, all that you're here, I'm so grateful that I have you here. Um, it's so, I'm so pleased. It's so helpful for me. Um, I wanted to tell you about my first coming to England. Um, so I wanted to live in England all my life. Like uh, that, I remember me. It's England. It's original English language. It's not American or something. You know, uh, accent. Yeah, and I wanted to live uh, here. And I was really shocked that um, when war started, I saw... I, I lived in Poland three months with my mother and a little brother. And I said to mom, I, I, I want to come to a different country. Or England, uh, I preferred uh, England all the time, or uh, Canada or USA. But England it was first. And when I saw that... Um, uh, United Kingdom give a, a program to Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian people, uh, homes for Ukraine. And I thought, what do you think, mom? Can, can I do it? And she said, yeah, of course you can. Yeah. And, and I thought, oh, I don't, I'm only 18. I, I don't want to go for my mom. My mom is my life, it's my love. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was really difficult. Um, but I thought, okay. I, I told my parents, like, few years that I want to be independent, I want to live on my own, I want to do on my own whenever I want, like, you know, that uh, old life. And now I'm here. Uh, it was really difficult for uh, first uh, one month without English. Uh, just my, oh my god, it's cringe, so I won't even <laughs> <laughs> uh, And it's trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, and I don't understand, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was the only I, I could say. Now, I telling you a story about me. I'm so I'm so happy about my English. Um, yeah, and about mentality. Yeah, Ukrainian and uh, English mentality really, really different. 
It was difficult, uh, not only with English, with mentality, too. with food, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't want to eat, like, for three weeks. Yeah, just that all, uh, um, every day, like, you should eat. Please, Dennis, you should eat. Uh, yeah, I will, later. Yeah, next day, next week. Yeah, but now it's good. I'm really grateful that I have this family. I love you so much. You're so, uh, yeah, you all so much. I'm so grateful for you, that you support me, help me, I'm unbelievably grateful, yeah. And, um, so let's go, Ukraine concert program. First piece, it's uh, Jürgen Sebastian Bach, Prelude and Food, uh, C-sharp minor, or original in Italy language, uh, C-moll. Uh, if uh, this um, second my Prelude and Food that I played in my life, I really like Bach, my teacher. I hope uh, she um, watched my stream. Hi, <laughs> hi my family, hello. Uh, yeah, and um, I always like uh, this composer. It's really difficult composer because it's classical composer, it's a polyphonic, it's really difficult. Yeah, you should be, a, uh, you should feel it, how to play it. And um, it's my second pilot and Fook, and I can say that it's my favorite from all 24 that I know in Bach. Yeah, and I'm glad to show you this. So, yeah.
Ludwig von Beethoven, Sonnet number no. 5, C minor or C mol. Um, you know, it's classical music um, composer. We have uh, about sonnet, uh, maybe it's uh, only in Slavic country, like uh, for example in Ukraine. We have uh, uh, three important uh, composers that we play this sonnet. If you if you have a good level, it's uh, Mozart, a uh, Gaiden, and Beethoven. To be honest, my favorite Beethoven, <laughs> and uh, I played only him. And um, why I chose this sonnet, um, and why I like Beethoven. Uh, yes, he's classical composer, but um, in his music I can hear a, ly a lyrical moment. Sometimes maybe it's for me a sad moment that. I understand that, yeah, that's a classical piece, but I can play uh, with my soul, not like um, just classical, it needs to be this, 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 and not different. Here I can a little bit um, like change it. I'm sorry, my teacher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I can change it and I can play a little bit how I feel. And this sonnet, why I chose this um, sonnet number five? Uh, it's really interesting key, uh, C minor, uh, once from my favorite. Um, this sonnet um, have a six page, and uh, every page is different, different, um, different uh, melody, uh, all different. That that I like. I like I like play different in one piece. And um, with this sonnet, how I said, it's classical uh, piece, but I hope uh, you'll see what I mean about um, emotional, lyrical, sometimes sad. That's interesting sonnet, so I will got to play for you Beethoven, sonnet number five in C minor.
Howard Pitts, Frederick Chopin, Nocturne, C sharp minor, this small. Uh, it's a Polish composer. Um, it's my favorite composer. It's really, he is really very classical, but and lyrical. It's romantic composer. Um, I want to tell you a sto um, story about him. His life was so difficult. Um, he was really ill. He was very ill. He um, he uh, coughed, coughed uh, all time, all time. Whenever he was, he coughed all time. And only, only when he played on the piano, he didn't cough. It, it was my, it was like magic, really. Uh, uh, and there was time, and you know, it was really bad medicine, and uh, uh, even doctors didn't know about uh, what is the ill, uh, why he were ill, what is that. And last years, uh, one uh, uh, last years that he lived, uh, he was coughing with blood all, all the time, and only when he played, uh, he he was like not ill, he was all healthy. Yeah, and it was really strange for people. And um, he was not very um, famous when he lived. Like, uh, I can say like um, a Muslim music uh, composer that I will play for you. They uh, started to be um, famous after his death. Yeah, like 90% of all uh, composers. And um, maybe you watched film Pianist. Uh, it's about uh, Israel and Germany's war, um, and uh, in this film, if you watched, um, one Jewish, yeah, one Jewish played on the piano, and a uh, uh, German uh, soldier saw it, and you know, um, Germans uh, every time killed a Jewish, and if you watch, you should remember that uh, in old old house was big, big royal and was a very skinny, very ill Jewish. And um, he saw, um, and a German soldier come to this house. And the Jewish was really, really scared because he saw that uh, he'll die. And this uh, soldier said, can you play the piano? And he said, yeah. And the first thing that he played, it was this Nocturne uh, in uh, C sharp minor. And if you watch, you'll remember. The second piece, it was ballad number one of Chopin, but it's high level. <laughs> not not today. Maybe <laughs> next time. Yeah, I'll show you. So yeah, Frederick Chopin, Nocturne in C sharp minor. <laughs>
Next is the Drich Van Beethoven again. Moonlight, Moonlight Sonnet. Um, I'm sure you all hear this sonnet. Uh, this music, it's rather famous. I think it's uh, the most famous Beethoven music. Uh, in a lot of films, movie, <laughs> really somewhere. So yeah, I'm glad that uh, only in England I learned it because uh, it, it, it's not very difficult, you know, it's difficult uh, with uh, work with uh, voice, uh, noise uh, in, in piano. It's uh, need to be really careful. And I don't know why I tried to learn it in Ukraine. Yeah, and it was like, oh, that's really easy. No, I won't play. And now I understand that it wasn't easy. In my, in my head just was, um, okay, I think that it's easy, but it's really difficult. And I'll say that it's easy, I don't want to play it. And uh, here, Lucy gave a present for me, this uh, Beethoven sonas for the piano. And yeah, I, I decided to, decide to learn it. So, I'll play it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
again, my favorite. <laughs> um, it's three pellets, number, oh my god, number four, no, number five, number four, and number twenty. Second pellet is my favorite. It's the most tragic, very sad. There you come. Hope you like it. <laughs>
It's Sergei Bodkevich, credit number one, opus six. In uh, case, uh, uh, um, about this piece, about this composer. Uh, I can say that it's modern Ukrainian composer, but uh, his piece uh, was lost. It was was lost. Thank you. <laughs> was lost uh, because. Because of Russia, because it was Ukrainian composer, and uh, when Ukraine was old Russian Empire, all Ukrainian language uh, pieces, poems, all uh, even picture, if it were if it was Ukrainian uh, like uh, Ukrainian person that uh, painted, it was it was not good, and uh, Russians people just um, crushed it, and. Um, his um, repertoire and his music, uh, people started find ten years ago, about ten years ago, in small countryside, uh, villages, cities, uh, cities, towns in Ukraine. And now I can say that it's uh, really modern Ukrainian composers. He not alive, <coughs> I wish, I wish. Uh, but his music. Um, Really interesting. His harmonic really interesting. Um, all Ukrainian composers that you uh, that I'll show you that I'll play for you, it will be different. Uh, every piece will be different, a different harmonic, uh, and it's interesting. <coughs> it, 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 to be honest, it's difficult to play uh, new uh, modern composers because uh, it's you know something new and it can be. Uh, uh, it can be like that, it can be like that, and I don't know how it's right. But, uh, uh, and this be, uh, my teacher from musical school, his name is Zorana Livna. Uh, she really wanted that I played it. She said, you should play it, it's, uh, it's really beautiful piece, it's amazing, it's new, it's new for you, it's new for our uh, music uh, school, it will be for your competition, uh, yeah, it, it will be good. For competition, uh, good if I uh, if I have um, a piece of that uh, a lot of people don't know very good that I can play it <laughs> and they won't know uh, what's right was not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, first when I when I saw this music, uh, she gave me uh, gave it for me four pages and I said no, never. No, uh, it was a lot of music. It was a very difficult key, uh, uh, small. It's it was really difficult, and I said no, no, I can't. And she said you can, of course you can. And I said okay, I'll try. Uh, and I and I did invite for um, for like magic that I <coughs> really good that I can uh, take it to competition, but a lot of months ago when I started learning, they just said yeah, you're ready. And I said, really? Okay, and now I can say that it's this piece, uh, this prelude, once from my favorite for all time that I played for 10 years for all my pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm glad to show you first Ukrainian composer, Sergei Burtkevich, prelude number one, opus six.
Empire composers. Um, how I told yesterday, I'll, I'll tell you this story. Um, I thought about this piece. Uh, uh, do I need to play it for you? Maybe not, maybe yes. Um, but it's really important piece for me. Uh, um, I tell you why. One more start, 24th of fe February. My mom uh, woke me up and said, wake up, worry stuff. It was uh, the worst morning that I have in my life. Um, and I, I didn't have a, a lot of time for, uh, for uh, packing my bag or something. I knew that war will be. I tell it my parents, but they believe that, and, and me too, we all believe that it won't be like you, you understand, yeah. And um, from my city, I live in west Western Ukraine. It's really safe, uh, safe uh, place in Ukraine. Um, and from my city, it's uh, hour and half driving to our mountain. It's an amazing mountain, and it's really close to my city. And uh, my dad <coughs> was decided that it's it's the war, so we should go or a um, different country, or minimum it's to mountain. Because we all knew that Putin don't need a mountain, and he knew that it's real Ukrainian people, and it never will be Russian. And <clears throat> uh, we had uh, two or three hours for packing our bag, uh, and we just left our home. Uh, yeah, and go to mountains. I didn't take uh, sheets, music. I thought, okay, it's the end, maybe. Yeah, to be honest, I really, when we drive to our mountains, I, I thought, okay, now we'll be rocking and I will die. Yeah, and I'll die. But thank you, God, I'm in England. My, my family is safe. Um, and we lived in uh, my uh, parents' uh, friend. A flat that have a flat in uh, in uh, in this city named Rahiv, uh, Rahiv Ukrainian, yeah. And we lived. Um, I lived a little bit more as uh, two weeks. It was unbelievable, but I couldn't stay home all day. Yeah, like. Uh, I went outside maybe one or two times in uh, all uh, two weeks um, because my dad and mom said uh, our, um, our soldiers uh, can uh, see you and give you a document that you need uh, to go to army. But I was 17 and we had the situation that yeah, I go with my mom and uh, to military, I go to us and just said well, uh, like, uh, how old are you? You should go to arm. And I said, I'm 17. Haha. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, that was, God, God bless me. Yeah, I was really 17 and it was uh, much better for me. And um, after second weeks, I said, no, I, I can't stay with you. I don't want to stay with that. I don't want to stay with mom, with my brothers. It's unbelievably bad for me. It's, uh, I, I can't just, can you imagine just in little flat, like, yeah, like this room, maybe a little bit more, and just two weeks, not go outside, just only window, or when it's night, I could go for like, smoke cigarettes just one time uh, a day, because my parents was really scared, and it was really, I, I, could, I couldn't stand, I said, I want to be a volunteer, and I want to help Ukraine, I, I come back to my city. Oh, my mom was shocked. My mom said that I'm stupid, she was crying, 
and she was really angry. My dad was unbelievably angry. They said, no, you, you can't go to, uh, on your own to a city. Uh, with who will you stay? And my dad said, I don't give you a key from, uh, for our flat. If you want to go, you will stay in your friends. And, okay, bye bye. Yeah, I said bye bye. I, I really I couldn't stay. Uh, and I volunteered on like a, uh, more uh, one week. Uh, and yeah, I lived in my best friend uh, flat. Yeah, but to be honest, I, I had a key from my flat. <laughs> yeah. And the first day uh, from the bus, I go to my flat and open op open the door. It was really like nostalgic. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and just the first that I did is go to my piano in my room. It was really, it was open, really dusty, yeah, really dusty. And here in Jupiter was um, music, and it was Gabrielin Autumn. Um, it was the first that I played uh, play uh, for more than two weeks. I cry again, I'm sorry, like <coughs> yesterday, it was for that I played for two, uh, two weeks of the war and this piece is really important for me, it's long piece, difficult piece, um, romantic piece and all the time this piece will, I will remember that this <coughs> piece from the war is for that I played, yeah, and uh, it's my soul, how I told you this, uh, Terry, it's my favorite piece for all my uh, time. I played it a few years, but only when war started, uh, it's uh, it, now it, it's still my the best and the favorite piece. It's really emotional. Uh, every note that I will play, it's my soul, it's my heart, uh, my bear, it will be something from my brain, it, it's just like how I feel music, how I feel piano. Yeah, you'll see it's really different, uh, different uh, piece. One page is uh, piano, second page is fortissimo, and it's changed. Hope you will like it. Thank you.
City was uh, music school, uh, musical school number two of uh, Vasil Barvinsky. It's uh, my school with his name. Uh, in my school, we have a competition again of his name, uh, Barvinsky competition, and all ch children that wanna uh, that wanna be in this competition need to play uh, one piece of this composer. And I think. That's the first piece that I played, that my teacher showed me, and it was for my first competition. Um, I remember that uh, this, uh, this feeling, it was so stressful, like, little boy, <laughs> 10 years, yeah, about 10 years, and I was really little, and first competition, and I was really nervous, uh, stay near the door and said, no. No, I can't play now. I won't go to the skin. No, please. But that was all right. Yeah. And uh, after first competition, I um, I have a, I had a lot of competition for next all my years that I uh, learned it in music school and even in musical college. So um, Vasil Barvinsky, a song without words. Thank you.
Um, next composers, Ukrainian, Mikola Lysenko. Um, his music uh, really close for my soul. Um, how I feel this world. Um, I wish I didn't hear a lot his music, uh, for example, on the concert or something. Um, but uh, in my city, again, we have a competition and in his name. My music school is number two and we have music school number, four, uh, number one. And uh, this music school in, uh, in his name. And yeah, uh, it was my second competition. Yeah, uh, together with first that I told you. Yeah, and I played five pieces for this competition. And can you imagine 10 years old, five pieces, really like 15 minutes or maybe more and just on my own, on the screen and people watch me and I, oh my God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I can say that this piece, Elegy, uh, it's my favorite piece from all Ukrainian composers and all Ukrainian <coughs> that I could play, that I play and I that I uh, had and listen sometimes, yeah, uh, I, I I didn't see uh, um, and I didn't uh, hear a uh, better piece for me uh, as that. So, Mikola Lysenko, Elegy. <laughs>
Next is again my Barwinski. Um, a page from an album. Um, very difficult harmonical piece, but really interesting. Difficult for learning, really difficult. Maybe not now, but I knew this piece six, seven years. And thank you, my teacher, she sent uh, sent it uh, uh, notes, um, music for me. And I, um, it, it was difficult for um, play it again, to be honest, really was difficult. Uh, but I hope it will be good and you like it. Uh, how I like it. It's favorite piece of this composer. Uh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> difficult piece in my life. Terry's favorite. <laughs> Every time. When I played the piano, Terry. Can you play Rahman? Maybe you'd like to play Rahman? Can you play Rahman? Well, let's go play Rahman. Can you Rahman? Yeah. yeah, Terry really, really like it. It's so sweet. I like it too. Yeah, it's really difficult. Um, a difficult piece. It's Bell's Prelude in uh, C-sharp minor by uh, Sergei Rachmaninov, a Russian composer. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, oh my god. Um, I, I, I want to say something, but... Okay. But, um, I have uh, my teacher in my college. Not that I told you, it's new teacher for you. My teacher in musical college, really good pianist. She is old, and she has a really good taste of music. And uh, I was, if I can say it, I was her favorite student. <laughs> yeah, and my favorite a student of my teacher from music school. <laughs> yeah, and um, uh, this teacher from college uh, said it to me. 
one year. Uh, maybe you'd like to play Rachmaninov. And I, and I remember Rachmaninov uh, that I heard and I think, no, but I'm not sure, I'll let you know later when I, when I listen to his uh, few pits. I open YouTube, uh, text Rachmaninov, open first a piece, and my eyes was like that. <laughs> and I said, no, never, <laughs> never in my life. And she said, what did you listen? And I said, a concert, something like that. And she said, huh, you want to play a piece for uh, half an hour? I said, but it's just Rachmaninov, I just listen to his, his music, like, you know, in a uh, few pieces. And she said, yeah, his harmonic is really difficult. And uh, I this, uh, after after conversation with her, I listen again to Rachmaninov and different pieces, <coughs> credits. But, uh, and I said, no, 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 it's, it's not for me. It's different harmonic that I played. I like classic. I don't like when piano sounds like Rubbish, I'm sorry. Sometimes, <laughs> music rubbish, it's good for. Yeah, yeah, any kind of music rubbish, yeah. Uh, really strong, you know, harmonic. And uh, she said, me, did you listen a prelude, a bass prelude? And I said, bass prelude? No, no, I, I don't remember that I listened to that. And she said, you should listen to it. And she said, play it now. Uh, in our lesson, uh, yeah, and I played it, and first note was like, hmm, that's interesting. But I'm sure that next will be like diff uh, difficult harmonics, uh, Rachmaninov harmonics, and I, I won't play it. 30 seconds, le uh, seconds later, and I think, what is that? Why I like it? <laughs> yeah, and she showed me, uh, and she, how, um, maybe she knew that I like it, and she said, oh, I have shit here. <laughs> yeah, I can give, yeah, I can give you. If you want, we can play it now. And I said, oh my god, why I said that I like it? I said, okay, okay, we'll play it. And um, video, um, video I play again, and she showed me um, uh, um, music. And I, and I feel like different moments in this piece, and really, like, fast, really interesting, not rubbish harmonic, uh, really good harmonic, classical harmonic that I like, like, in my... Um, and different pieces that I like to play, and I think, okay, uh, I'll have this challenge. And uh, but she said it, uh, said it uh, before I started to learn it. It's really difficult. You should <coughs> you should be very careful with uh, every note. You should listen every note. You should feel it. And um, um, every compo new composers that I um, play. I tried to find information about him in Wikipedia. For me, it's really important. Um, for me, important that I'm um, that I'm feeling um, his mood. Uh, if you know about composer, you know about his music. You know his life. You know what he uh, what uh, did he do uh, in his life. Uh, for example, where he lived, where he uh, wrote pieces or poems. All about him. And you know, when I uh, read about composers, it's really interesting for me. To be honest, I don't like reading. I don't like reading. Yeah, uh, that's boring for me. But about music, I can read a lot, really a lot. And um, I read about um, uh, about him and about this prelude. And it was, uh, he hates this prelude. He, yeah, he he didn't love to play it, uh, but it was favorite piece of all people that uh, knew him. Yeah, and he okay, I'll play it. Yeah, and he played uh, every time that people asked him, but he didn't love uh, it. And I can understand why, because it's really just classical harmonic, not like the different his piece that I can't listen, but I can listen it and I can play it and I love it. I really love it. And uh, I said, okay, I'll do this challenge. Yeah, it was four months I learned this piece. It was it was long time. It was like uh, uh, every time that I tried to learn, I was no, no, I can't learn it. It's really big, you know. It's really you should remember all like chords that you play. It's it's really difficult and medium. It's really fast. And I thought, <coughs> okay, first 
Okay, uh, start. Okay, damn, but not uh, medium. But I said, okay, Jesus will help me. And thank you, God. Yeah, he helps me. And uh, it's my the most difficult piece in my life. I'm really glad to play it. Um, yeah, and Terry's favorite. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, how she said yesterday, you will see why it's her favorite. Yeah. <laughs>
Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. You're gonna tell us what it is. No. <laughs> Not so